I'm Lauren with Tri-State RV. I'm going to do the walkthrough on your camper here, which is kind of go over everything, how it all works. Uh, your power tongue jack is pretty self-explanatory. You just got a raise and lower. You also got a little light here that will help you hook up at night. Um, when you unhook from your camper, it's uh, best to just level it up at this point. And at that point, when you're level at your campsite, then you throw down your stabilizer jacks, and that would be how you'd set up the campsite. Your propane tanks are both under here. They're both 20 pound tanks. The best way to operate these is to just leave both tanks on. And while it's on, whichever way this pointer is pointing is the, is the tank it's going to be pull, pulling out of. Whenever that tank's empty, this area here will turn red and automatically switch to the opposing tank. So when you see that, that that's turned red, you just switch it to the tank you know already has gas and you shut the one off, unhook it, go fill it and put it back on and turn it back on. Look for the same thing to happen. The uh, battery is a uh, just a standard group 24 12 volt deep cycle battery. It is a brand new interstate battery. They do have a one year warranty with them. There's not much maintenance to do with them on them. So anytime you have the camper plugged up, at your shore power or anytime you hooked it to the truck the camper will see 12 volts so if you get to it your battery be dead jack don't work as soon as you hook to your vehicle you'd have it or as soon as you plug it in you'd have 12 volts and then it start charging your battery this is your uh, outlet for your furnace it does have a bug screen over it i actually got it running right now and it's working you do have outside receptacles here so if you want to power anything up out here you got a picnic table or what have you the, uh, there is outside speakers anytime you select uh, inside or outside speakers it's, that's inside there. I'll show you when we get to them, but uh, they would play out here. Your outside awning, it is a power awning. The control board for everything's right inside here. Um, to run the awning out, you just simply push the button. It goes all the way out. And then there is the awning light it is on the roller when it's all the way out i'll show it to you as soon as it's all the way out here so you just hold the button until it's all the way fully extended here and then you, if you want the awning light you just turn it on you can kind of aim the lights with however you stop the roller if you get in the high winds and you want to lower one side or rain you just simply pull this down and that will lower your awning you can do that on both sides or leave it up that's how your awning runs. Anytime you leave the camper unattended, it's a good idea to run the awning on in because wind will get a hold of it and they're, uh, we've seen a lot of damage happen from them. So you just simply uh, run it back in when you're not in use. Back to the camper. Um, the bumper tube is a common place for people to store your drain, your sewer hose. Uh, they don't come with a sewer hose, but that is a good place to store them any time in travel. There is a nice little compartment back here to throw other extra little goodies in. Of course, your spare tire, that's the one thing you hope you never use, but it is a new spare tire that's on it, and it's got a nice cover. This is your water heater. Uh, there's not a lot of reason to access your water heater. We did winterize this yesterday. We're starting to see some cooler weather. Everything checked out nice on it. It is a gas electric. You don't have to light any pilots. Anytime you kick the water heater on, I'll show you it turns on from the inside. If you're not plugged up, it'll be on gas. If you're plugged up, it'll be on electric. Your fresh and city water, the difference there is if you go somewhere that doesn't have a hydrant or city water, you would be put, you'd be hauling your water with you. So you'd put water in the fresh water tank and then you'd have to run your pump inside and I'll show you where that switch is at. So you'd have water, a limited supply, and then you'd get your pressure when you kick your pump on. If you're at a place with a hydrant, you use the hydrant and you'd have a hose hooked to it. So you got, that's what we call city water. You got water and pressure. Right here is the drain point in your camper. Uh, when you take this off and hook your sewer hose at a dump site, this is how you'd pull it and you'd drain it. That'd be your wastewater, your what we'd typically call your black water. Got a nice little outside light here. It is an LED light. Um, light it up out here and there is an outside shower. It's hot and cold water. Right now we did have it winterized again, so, but it's kind of nice to have a water supply out here, especially when you're draining the tanks. You got something to wash your stuff off with. Storage compartments on the side here. Um, this is access from the inside. This is just underneath the booth that's in there. There's more, there's another sewer drain here. It's actually your two gray tanks. Your gray tanks is what your uh, drain from your sink and your shower would be. So both of them dumps are right here and that's where you would hook on in. This is a service panel for the back side of the refrigerator. Again, there's not a lot of reason for you to deal with this area. This is a point if you have some work being done on it, that's how we'd have to access the back side of the refrigerator. 
and this is just the sewer vent that's on the camper. That's pretty well everything that's on the outside of the camper, so we'll go inside and check it out. Right, although right back here is the power cable. We've got it hooked up. This is a 30 amp cable, which it does have a 30 amp plug. It looks like a dryer plug, but it is just a 110 plug, and it's what's at all RV campsites. When you get ready to go, you just unplug it, and this all just shows in and stores right there, right in the unit. These are uh, cable and satellite hookups if that's if you have that at your campsite or you decide to use them that's where these would hook in we're now getting ready to go on the inside uh, just a quick thing you'll get keys with the camper uh the keys to the door here the top lock just locks the latch here and the lower one here will lock the deadbolt when you get inside the camper here here's your main control panel here and everything's pretty self-explanatory that's what I was running the awning out with. This is that awning light. This is your water heater. This runs it basically on the uh, gas side and then this runs it on the electric side. This is the water pump if you're using the fresh tank. So that gives you pressure inside here whenever you're pulling out of the fresh tank. And then all these are just basic lights all over the camper here that lights up all over. They're all pretty, you can see the main light coming on and off. There's blue indirect lights all over this thing. So it's just a lot of different lights. They all control something. Right up here shows the level of all your things in your camper. Like here's your battery, it's showing it's full charge. You got a fresh tank, your black tank, and your two grays. Uh, again, they're all empty right now, so that's how you keep track of it. Right here, you'll notice on the back side of the TV, this is where you'd hook up to your antenna that's on the roof. It is a digital antenna. You'll notice the green light here. That is a booster for the antenna, so it helps you. When you power your TV up, you scan in your local channels, and that's what you have. This would be for that satellite hookup. If you hook the satellite, you'd have to go into a receiver and then into the TV and hook to your satellite hookup out there. This is your stereo system right here. Just powers up. It does have a DVD player, so that's where you'd be hearing out the speakers or in here. So this is this is just another indirect lighting. Again, this has blue indirect lighting everywhere. There is some switches that won't kick on with a light switch, but they do power up at each spot. You'll also notice that each individual light you can kick on or off. You've got inside speakers in here as well to play through the system. Your air conditioning right here is pretty self-explanatory. You point it to hot or cold. Um, the warmer it is would be to the red, and of course the cooler it would be to the, to the snowflake side. And then you kick it on the AC or just onto the blower side of it. We have tested it. It does blow good cold air. Right here's your refrigerator to power it up. You just simply turn it on. If you leave it on auto, what it will do is it will get cold with just the gas side. It's just a small little uh, pilot light that burns. And as soon as you plug it up to electricity, then it would automatically switch over to the electric heating element to keep things cold. So you can get it cold going down the road. If you wish to just leave it on gas, you just remove that and it will just stay on gas. So auto, there's not a whole lot of reason not to just run it on auto. So kick the fridge on and off. It does take several hours for these to get cold and maintain temperature. So don't be worried if it's not cold in 30 minutes. I've seen them take up to four to six hours to get cold. Anywhere you see a white strip on the electricals that's hooked to a GFI circuit, naturally you're gonna have it by anywhere that's near water. The GFI is in the bathroom. You don't have power at these receptacles when you're plugged in just re hit the hit the reset button on it and you should have it your cook stove's pretty self-explanatory as well you can see there's indirect lighting here cook stove you just turn it on light it light the pilots and you got you got your cooktop it does have a microwave here the microwave's pretty standard you just set your time and you got it right here is an inlet for the furnace we do have it running right now there's no filters right there but that's just an inlet for it and then it distributes the heat throughout the camper. Your blinds are just simply push up and push down. The strings that you see attached to it, if they get to where they fall, all you gotta do is tighten the tension on it and it'll tighten them up. Right here on the wall is the control for your furnace. I do got it running right now. Just shut it off, would be shutting it off or set your temperature. The couch here does make into a little bed. It's just little jackknife style that's all you got to do to put it into a bed style there is a lot of storage underneath it and there was you've seen from the outside there's access to underneath this the booth will also make into a bed if everything's folded down and these will make your mattresses this right here is your co co2 detector and lp detector so if there there is carbon monoxide or lp leak this will go off and buzz there is also a smoke detector right above 
on the roof there as you go in the camper. As we go into the bathroom here, it is winterized right now. Just to use the toilet, all you do is when you got water pressure, is you just push it down part way, put water in there, do your business, push all the way, we'll flush it. Same basics on the shower. This is the GFI I was telling you about. You can see it's lit green, so all your receptacles work fine at that point. But if you don't, you just hit the reset button. You have different lights here. It's your exhaust fan, and then your main light here. The exhaust fan will only get rid of air. You'll have to actually open the vent for it to do it. Be sure you close the vent when you're done it so you don't get a water leak in the camper. There is more light switches in here. There is also some charging USB ports over here for your phone. Uh, you can see ones that don't shut off with the main breakers. That would just be an individual light that you just get in there and actually hit the light. But So you do have a little light light in here. One last thing when you walk into the camper here is your actual fuse panel. All you do is you push on the top of it and it'll pop out. You open it up. You got your main breakers just like you'd have in the house and then you got 12 volt fuses. These are just a standard automotive tile fuse. One thing that is nice, if you would blow a 12 volt fuse, it will light a big red light up against it so you'd know which one is blown. And then to shut it, you just shut your lid and push it one time and it's in. That's pretty well everything on your camper. Everything works fine. It's, uh, it's, it's been well taken care of. I believe you'll have you a pretty nice camper here, so enjoy.